Jen, aside from someone taking a break from whatever issues are, are going on, how can they step outside of their story? Because I think it's so hard when this is the only life we've known and this is our badge and our chip on our shoulder for whatever's happened to us. How do we step outside of our own story for a moment? Well, I think the gift that writing uh, gives the writer is the ability to go into the fictional world. And when you go into the fictional world, say, for example, you're going to write a TV spec instead of an original. So there is a gift in that because you're moving outside of, you know, I think the biggest mistake writers make is when they write a pilot that is more autobiographical versus just drawing from their emotional truth. And the difference is when you're, when you're writing something autobiographical, you're too stuck. You're too in it and you're too like, well, it didn't happen that way or this didn't happen or that didn't happen. And I work with writers a lot on that. And I'll say, like when you look at the movie Nixon and you go, okay, the most pivotal moment in that movie has to do with the drunken phone call. That didn't happen yet it was an incredible thing for the movie to have in it because it was dramatic story and that's what needs to happen. It's really taking the framework of a situation and then I, I think the greatest thing writers do is you add your own worldview to what the story is. So I, I think that when you have a writer that's writing a TV spec, a, a lot of writers will say, well, I can't use my voice in a TV spec. And it, yes, you can use your voice. You're, if you identify with one of the characters in a very unique way because of your personal background, then you can escape from your pain and being totally in everything that is and move it into a character that is separate from your world, but use your emotional truth because you identify with that character to drive them action-wise. So if you look at one of their scripts and you see them as the hero, but they're portraying themselves as the villain or vice versa, they, they see themselves as a hero and you see them as anything but that, do you try to guide them another way or that's just their truth so that doesn't matter well it all depends on what is working for the story mm, okay. you know i i would say you know when i look at as i mentioned the night manager and happy valley like what i noticed in both of those series that i thought was so brilliant were the antagonists were incredible and so i i, I do think that there's so much we can learn from developing the antagonist, understanding the antagonist, moving with the antagonist. And I, I, I think that uh, if writers are seeing themselves, and I mean, I find that most of the writers I work with tell me they see themselves in almost all of the characters they write. So the good part of that is they're not narrowly narrowly looking at one character and saying okay this is me and you can certainly recognize that when they get stuck in something that is so modeled after them then i think it's it's not necessarily saying i know this is modeled after you and therefore you're not doing this it's saying this character isn't working in this situation because of mm. blank. And it's separating so that they can separate themselves in their story and recognize that you're guiding the story so that it's going to move in a, a stronger direction. 